So this presentation is basically to explain the difference between agostic and anagostic hydrogen atoms. And the distinguishing between the two has been a matter of debate and discussion. There are two papers which I have referred to in order to answer this question. Both the papers are referenced in this presentation. The question came up because I used the classic paper by Brookhart and Green and Parkin. All of them are uh, well established scientists and they have uh, credentials to talk about the CHM interactions. In this PNI's paper, they have very clearly mentioned in two different places, once in the text and once in a figure, that you can distinguish between agostic and anagostic interaction based on a few criteria. One of them is the distance, the other is the angle at which the hydrogen is approaching the metal atom. And the third point is about the chemical shift of the CH proton, which is interacting with the metal when compared to the CH proton, which is present on the same carbon, but it is not interacting with the metal. And so it is called uncoordinated CH bond. So agostic interactions are supposed to have an upfield shift with respect to uncoordinated CH. When you say upfield, that means the proton is more shielded and so you have to apply a greater magnetic field. So that is the general understanding. When you say it is upfield shifted, it means that it is having a greater degree of electron density around it, around the hydrogen, which is coordinated. And the opposite is set of the anagostic interaction. So in the next slide, we have worked out what you would expect for the classic understanding of agostic interactions and anagostic interactions. So the way it is defined, agostic interactions are defined as those hydrogens which are interacting with electron deficient metal centers. And so some electron density flows from the CH bond, the sigma bond of the CH into the empty metal orbital of the metal atom resulting in depletion of electron density around the CH bond. So this would mean that there is some electron density depletion in HC, the one which is marked as HC is electron density depletion. And so if there is depletion, then the delta value will go up. So HC minus HD would be positive. There will be a downfield shift of the uncoordinated hydrogen atom with respect to the uncoordinated hydrogen atom. This is what you expect from a normal reasoning uh, which you might have about the agostic interaction. The same thing, same type of an argument with respect to the anagostic hydrogen gives you a negative shift. This is exactly opposite of what is written in the paper. So let's take a look at some of the original references. When I looked for the original references, I found that there's a review article written by the same two authors, two of the authors from the PNAS paper. They are Brookhart and Green. In uh, 1983, they have published a review of their own work based on published work of others. And they have clearly said that the agostic interaction of CH bonds with metal atoms which are having an electron count of 
n equals 0 is different from the chemical shifts that you observe when n equals 2. These two chemical shifts are very, very different. So, automatically or immediately you would realize that a generalized statement like the one that they have made in the PNAS paper may not be tenable. When I looked further, I obtained one more paper. But before I go there, let me look at the static chemical shifts that they have observed. When you say static, that means the CH bond that is interacting is stationed in the same place, which means the chemical shifts of those protons are more reliable than the ones which are fluxional. So let's ignore the second column, uh, the second major column, which is titled this fluxional. Let's look at the static, which is the first set. And in the third column, within the static uh, chemical shifts, you find um, you find that there are both positive and negative uh, delta values. Delta values which are highly negative are indicative of the fact that the proton is sitting close to the metal. Whereas uh, a delta value like 6.4, which is mentioned there, is clearly indicative of the fact that this is in fact a proton which is sitting close to the metal but it is being uh, deshielded. So very clearly this proton is deshielded. So this clearly tells you that one has to be very careful when interpreting chemical shifts. Now I come to another paper which is a recent paper in 2015 by Wolfgang Scherer. And Scherer um, has uh, gone back even further back to the literature when he looks at the interactions which are observed by Trofimenko, the person who originally interacted these strange chemical ships even before Bruchart and Green uh, developed the concept of agnostic interactions. So here you can see very clearly there are two metals. One is a D6 metal, another is a D8 metal. And these two metals, even though they are D6 and D8, they have a very clear difference in the way in which uh, the, the chemical shifts are being affected. So uh, the proton that is interacting, one of them has got a high negative chemical shift, minus 5.88. The other one, which is a nickel complex, is uh, now having a chemical shift of 6.10. So this uh, tells you that the electron count makes a very big difference in chemical shifts. And uh, uh, I will uh, come back to the original paper before I make a comment on chemical shifts in the presence of metal atoms. So here, uh, the statement that, uh, the blanket statement that they have made that agnostic interactions always lead to upfield shifts of uncoordinated CH, uh, uncoordinated CH bonds or uh, protons is rather um, unsubstantiated. They should not or too generalized a statement and one should not accept that. So this is the answer to the question which uh, one of you has asked in the in the class about the anomaly of having upfield chemical shifts of uh, the CH. In, uh, bonds. So we will uh, stop with this section and I want to make a comment on what happens to uh, the protons which are close to metal atoms. Okay, so this is an excerpt from Professor Elshenbroek's book and it is from his own work. 
he has mapped the chemical shifts that are observed in a set of protons which are distributed uh, systematically at different angles uh, with respect to the aromatic ring system and the aromatic ring system is coordinated to a metal so the delta delta that you observe uh, varies from positive values to negative values depending on the angle which the hydrogen subtends with respect to the metal and the ring system i am just giving you this as uh, uh, as some information to tell you that you have to be very careful when you interpret proton chemical shifts uh, when the proton is sitting close to a metal atom now uh, the way in which the chemical shifts change are not easy to interpret and uh, a very long time ago i remember reading in a book by ed becker uh, a, a fairly classic book on high resolution mr spectroscopy i believe a new version is also available uh, on the uh, IAC library, uh, but in that book, I remember reading that if you have a small delta value between occupied metal orbitals and unoccupied metal orbitals, typically in metal systems, this homo lumo would be between d orbitals of the metal, then you can have anomalous paramagnetic chemical shifts. even if the uh, even if the uh, molecule itself is not paramagnetic so these are unusual uh, chemical shifts that are observed when you have low lying excited states which may not be populated at room temperature but nevertheless because they are accessible uh, to the metal they seem to have an influence on the type of fields they generate in the presence of an external magnetic field so when you are doing an nmr experiment you have an external magnetic field and this causes a response from the metal and this response could be either reinforcing the magnetic field or depleting the magnetic field around the proton so you have to be very careful when you interpret chemical shifts on protons which are close to metal atoms